Good morning. This is me, Melissa, at Safe Haven. It's day 25. You've been doing good. I'm so proud of you. And we're learning. You know, I'm learning some things that I had forgotten, to be honest about it. And some things I'm learning, learning. <laughs> and uh, But God has something for us today. And, and we've been in chapter 91 of Psalms. That is the best... That's the best chapter to read if you're going through some hard times and you're afraid or you're scared. This is a great chapter. And so we're going to be in verses 5 and 6 today. I'm going to read it out of the NIV, but it says this. Uh, you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys midday. Let's break it down. God is basically saying, don't be afraid. Fear not. You know, that's something that he says all the time is fear not. I'm with you. Be not afraid. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Why? We live in a society that's just gripped with fear. It's in our culture. It's from all sides. We're getting fear. If you think about it, we're in the last days. I believe that we're in the end times and we haven't hit the stride yet, but we're getting there. And, and I see how people's love is just growing colder and colder. And I'm thinking, what in the world? You know, we see more and more things to be afraid of. I remember Jerry and I driving down the road the other day saying, did you ever think you would see something like this in our lifetime? We have had, uh, we've got global threats. We've got riots in the street. We have unrest in the government. We have pandemics. We have so many things to fear. And fear can take over real, real easy. And it's understandable why people get that way, but not for the children of God. That's a yoke that we should never be under, is the yoke of fear. And yet, I see a lot of Christians that are operating there. Now, the world is spending billions and billions of dollars every year to get rid of fear. And, and it's in treatments and, and books and pills and medicines and, and all kinds of things just to get through the fears that they face every day. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Well, if God didn't give you fear, who did? Duh, Satan did. And we, we need to realize that he seeks to make us feel unloved, powerless, and having no sound mind. That's his goal. He's always wanting to go against what God's word promises. And fear is a favorite weapon. And, and the, the psalmist assures us there's two specific things he mentions here that he gives us an assurance that he's with us. The first assurance is he will protect us from the terror by night. What is that? Well, people aren't too crazy about nighttime. Darkness is when they start to fear, especially if they're alone. And, and the media and the social uh, social things, the, the movies, they all kind of push this idea of darkness. Evil comes in darkness. We know that. Crimes, more crimes happen in the dark than any other time. And the dictionary defines terror. Listen to this. Terror is an intense, sharp, overmastering fear. The key word there is overmastering. That means that fear rep is mastering over every other thing you have in your life. It, it, it's over the word of God. It's over God himself. That fear grows to such a degree. See, if you let a little bit of fear in, Boy, I'm telling you, it will take over and you can hardly function in life. And, and it replaces God's word. So terror by night are the most extreme forms of fear. And they come from inside us, thoughts and, and uh, see, fear is an inside deal. It's not something on the outside that's caused, it may, you may think that, but the fear comes internally. And so he's saying, I'm going to protect you from those extreme things that are happening. And then he says, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day. Now the arrow represents all the physical attacks that we have in our walks with God. And no need to fear, God says you'll be protected. But listen to this, I will restore to you the health 
to help and heal your wounds, describes the Lord. And that's in Jeremiah 30, 17. Worrying does not change a cotton-picking thing in our life. All it does is make us nervous and upset and obsessed with thinking on the wrong things. The terror by night are the larger, more supernatural spirit that the demonic spirits love to play in your head and and take you into places you don't need to be. That's the terror by night. And the other thing is, it's those crippling uh, anxieties that Satan stirs in you, like panic attacks and that type thing. Now, the second assurance was the arrows that fly by day. What are those? Those are the cuts and bruises of everyday life. Those are the things that you know, it's the little things that add up in life. And and if, if they're left unguarded and alone, little fears become bigger and bigger and bigger. So you have God's covering the big anxieties and the small anxieties. So the, the de- so verse five really deals with fears on a grand scale, on a supernatural scale, on a little bitty scale. There's no reason that we should be walking in fear. So let's pray, and tomorrow we'll be in the next verse. I I like studying out the book of Psalms 91. That's a good chapter. So get in, study it. Let's talk to Jesus. Father, Father, what a beautiful day you've given us. And I pray, Lord, that this day, that this day we will see that we are not to walk the way the rest of the world walks. Help us to walk above that. We are called to a higher calling, Lord, and fear is not one of them. So help us to get above fear, Lord, and walk in faith. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow.